Claus Ranch, as you just saw, this thing now moves under its own power. That is right. We got an LS swapped, Discovery 2, running, driving, doing its thing, and it's a wonderful day. First, we gotta finish up a couple things. We got that intake to sort out, a little bit of wiring, a couple other small things. Let's get to it. All right, we're gonna work on mounting the ECU, the GM ECU, that is. And it's gonna go in this area. This is where the air pump was. There's our little fuel cutoff. We're gonna relocate that. And we're gonna use this GM ECU bracket. So we got the ECU mounted up. There's our little bracket there, just an aluminum piece with a couple 90s. That went where the fuel shutoff was. Then up here, there was a hole already in the firewall. So we utilize that. And then right here where the brake line clips on, we're left with the relays and fuses for the GM harness along with the fuel shutoff. So we made up this aluminum bracket and that will go right there and we'll get those guys bolted on. So we're gonna work on the intake now and this is pretty tight between here and the fan. And then we're gonna wrap around here, GM mass airflow, and we'll rework the factory air box in some sort of fashion to end up there with the mass airflow for the Land Rover. We need both of them in place here, so should be interesting. Not enough real estate for all of this, but we'll make something happen. I think eventually on these, and maybe down the road on this one, we're gonna come up with some sort of fabricated out of aluminum piece that sits here. I don't like the way the manual has it for the conversion, but that's what we're gonna do with the time constraint here. And then we'll figure out something better. So here's what they suggest using. We got a tube by Sphincter. So this is one of those like dryer duct style tubes. I already did a little pre-prep on it. Here is what it comes with for the end, but that's too long, so I sliced that off. And this is the coupler that's gonna go on the throttle body. And then we'll do bendy bendy and try and keep that away from the fan. So we're gonna locate this guy. We'll play around and figure out what direction we wanna have this. It's going to sit somewhere like that and we'll make a mount probably from here to this stud on the manifold. That will help secure the flexible tube away from the belt and the fan as well. And then we'll probably have to come up with something here, maybe an extra hose clamp and go to maybe that bracket or that bolt again and keep that tube pulled tight because we don't want the fan to eat it. So we whip this little aluminum bracket up. This goes from the intake manifold to the AC compressor. Mass airflow will bolt to that. In the manual on this, it looks like they used zip ties, which I suppose would work if you are intimidated from making a bracket, but I figured we'll just do a little sturdier piece. So we have the little flexible intake in place. It comes close to the fan. In their pictures, they use some zip ties from the bend up around like the throttle body. Um, what we're gonna do is we made up this little aluminum bracket with a slot and we're going to slide it into a hose clamp like so and then it'll go to that same intake manifold bolt and around the tube and keep her away from the fan. So we got this guy sitting where we want it, tucked nicely away from the fan. And what we're gonna do here is I wanna use the factory air box. I like that. We got the intake from this side and it's just nice and sealed up. So I was experimenting with an extra one that has broken clip and I got it chopped apart. 
And what we're gonna do is cut one apart and make it work somewhere like that. So there's a factory one not cut apart, it comes out like an angle. So it was something like this. We're gonna need it to be coming out straight. And we're gonna use our little plastic weld staple gun and we will melt it back together when we have it in the location and then we'll smooth it out probably with some JB weld. If I had any sort of drawing skills on the old uh, CAD, I'd probably draw up what we want and get it 3D printed, but I don't. So we're just gonna make do. Now we're gonna clearance this a little more and then we should be able to slot that guy back in. All right, so this is roughly what we're looking for there. All right, so if you haven't used one of these before, it is kind of like a soldering iron, except it has these little wire staples. Heats them up, they melt into the plastic, like so, which then secures the plastic to each other. So there, then you just go in, snip those ends off. Um, I know I've linked it before, but I'll throw it in the Amazon store under the tool stuff. It's a decent thing to have around for the 20 some dollars it costs. So we'll get a couple more on there, cut the ends off, and then we'll probably JB weld smooth, and then we'll be good to go. All right, so we got where the mass airflow is gonna sit and where the other mass airflow is gonna sit. So now we just need to connect the two. We're gonna start with this guy and Cut it down, shorten it up a little bit, cut it there, weld the piece on. That piece welded up there. Sits in there pretty nice. It's getting to look pretty complete. We just need to GB weld that up. And then this thing is ready to dry. That's it. Just a few simple videos. Not even that much work. All right, we got her all molded on there with a little GB weld and smoothed out. We're gonna scuff it up and shoot the top of it with some bed liner. Took the upper shroud off so we can give you a little better look at the clearance of the fan versus the intake tube. And we got that hose clamp to this bracket, pulling it tight so it can't come any closer. And I can stick the fat of my knuckle on there or my thumb in between. So we have a good amount of clearance there, no issues. So let's take a look at the finished product. We took a factory air box, which normally comes out in this direction, but there is an AC compressor in the way. So we cut it apart and use that hot stapler and put it in at a 90 degree angle, then smooth that out. We just use some bed liner on top to keep it nice looking into the factory mass airflow three inch aluminum pipe that we welded up into the GM mass airflow into that flexible hose with the bracket holding that off the fan that one there into the throttle body we're in the expansion tank line up over top here we use cushion clamps on the hoses and the harness, as you can see, to keep everything sitting where it should be. And the harness turned out pretty well. Got the black fabric tape on the Land Rover harness and the GM harness, which is tucked in pretty well and hidden, is just using normal electrical tape. That way we can quickly separate the two if you ever have to chase anything. ECU's mounted where the secondary air pump was. Relays and fuses for the GM harness are sitting right there as well with a bracket off the fuse box. And the OBD2 port for the LS is there. The fuel shutoff switch moved it from there because the ECU is there now to up here. Quick and easy access in case you ever roll this over. Overall, very pleased at how this turned out. Um, that's a lot of stuff to pack in this one area. We got it done cleanly and everything seems to work as it should. But do you think we should take this thing for a drive now? I think we should. A beautiful sight. First time out 
outdoors in a couple months. A little hard to see since we got the sun glare in here, but we have everything working on the cluster. Temp gauge works fine, gas gauge works fine, tack. She's a little stinky burning everything off right now. But that right there is an alternative conversion engineering LS swapped Discovery 2. Runs and drives, transmission seems to shift nicely. And also what was pretty important to us and why we chose this kit is the cluster still works as it should. How awesome is that? We have an all aluminum 5.3 LM4 out of a GMC Envoy in the Discovery 2, backed by the factory Discovery 2 transmission, so everything works as it should. That right there, that's gonna be hard to beat as the ideal Land Rover Discovery, to me at least. So after taking this thing down the road, we'll get it back in the shop, check everything over to make sure everything is still good. Then we'll give it a longer drive and we'll take you along on the next video with a little more in-depth review on what we think of an LS swap discovery. And like I said, I'll try and get a complete parts list of what we used on this for you guys. So if you want to tackle this, it makes it just a tad bit easier. It is a daunting task, but it is doable and it is good. With that being said, appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all those things. Catch you on the next one.